Tomorrow on Home and Family, the real co-host Tamara Mori Housley visits our home. Plus, actress and singer Susan Anton is performing. Back with board-certified ophthalmologist Dr. Annie Negrin, and she's just discussing important information about eye floaters, a condition that 70% of the population will experience at some point in their lives. Welcome, Welcome Doctor. Yes. You have a very um, attentive cast here because everybody here, excluding myself, has had eye floaters. Oh, liar. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way. I How old are you? you I are have, I, I, <laughs> Uh, well, He's got two glass eyes. I, yeah, right. That's why, exactly. Right. But it's, what are eye floaters? You know, they're spots in our vision. They're just what they sound oh, like. Oh, then I do have those. So, and, okay. and who does it? A lot of people have floaters. If you live long enough, you'll have a floater in one or both eyes. They're very, very common. And this is a great picture because it really shows how the gel in our eyes, it's thick jelly the day we're born. Uh -huh. And as we age, we get little liquid clumps in that jelly. And that's so what the floater is? when light comes through, it casts a shadow. Right, and you see that shadow. So the shadow can be a little squiggly line like that. It could be a dot. I've had people describe it as like a cobweb. Well, you think, I mean, you Something think, you, I, it's like I kept thinking, oh, my eyelashes. Is sure, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Something is there. You think something's there. But you don't feel anything. You no. don't, it is painless. But you eventually learn to live with it. Like I think, most people do. You yeah. Know, we all have different personalities. I mean, I have patients who go crazy about their floaters. It's it's impairing their life. They're miserable. It causes oh. anxiety. Oh but God. eventually they Get go away. It. All <laughs> floaters eventually go away? Almost all floaters eventually go away. Yeah. My yeah. Mom's it's away. a matter of dissipating over time. By gravity, it falls below your line of sight. And also, believe it or not, our wonderful brains learn to suppress it. So oh. it's still there. And wow. one day you'll like look really quickly in a direction and say, oh, I see it. I thought it was gone. I haven't That's seen it. Only once. if we have a brain, right? Only <laughs> yeah. well, you to the are you at me? <laughs> when you shut your eyes, will you see more floaters? So if you have light, you will see a floater. So even with your eyes closed, if the lights are on, you can see a floater. I have one that I see when I'm laying out in the sun, even though I try not to lay out in the sun. <laughs> wow. when, with my eyes closed, but you need light. So if it's a pitch black room and your eyes are closed, you can't see a floater. Okay. And you see them more with a big bright white background or wall. You, you need light you can to see. see. Yeah. And Let's if you our... add, how about dry eyes? I have dry eyes. I know mm. I'm completely going off You're of You're really going off topic. <laughs> I'm because having so many problems accurate. and they keep putting me in all <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I'm, I didn't realize how many problems I have. You can get floaters from dry eye too, but uh. there, there are a lot of causes of floaters, but hands down, the most common is age. So it comes with age. Why are you looking at me? 50% <laughs> of people over 50, 60% yeah. of people over 60 years old, and so on. We'll get them. We'll get, we'll get them. Sophie, what was your, you well, had. Uh, my situation was that I, I don't have them now, but I did yeah. have them about 10 years ago when I was going through an enormous period of stress. Mm. I was very, very stressed. Yeah. And suddenly I got all these floaters and it was really scary. Mm -hmm. And then they went. How long How long did it take? A few months? Uh, weeks, no, it, took, it, it was a few months. It's so interesting because we know a lot about the mind-body connection now and how our state of mind can affect us physically and the eye is no different. But we don't know exactly how that stress trauma is causing floaters, but it does happen. It is not uncommon. It's not the most common reason for floaters, though. So mostly it, it is age, being nearsighted, any type of surgery you have in mm -hmm. your eyes, anything that even like kids get that get hit in the head with a soccer ball, they might not have a concussion, but they might get floaters after uh -oh. that, even though they're only, you know, nine or ten years old. Okay, yesterday we had the eclipse. Mm. I used the NASA certified glasses that Dan what? had given us. 100% NASA certified. If they're good enough for astronauts, they're good enough for our team okay. here. I looked up at the eclipse. I'm not kidding you. This is not, I'm not making this up in my head. For about four hours, I saw floaters and I thought I'd blinded myself. Yeah. It has since gone though. Good. Good. You didn't blind yourself. Okay. But, how, but a few hours, that's common. How long were you looking at the sun for? I guess longer than I ever had in my <laughs> life. I didn't realize I did. Yeah. But would that because I cause stress to my eye? Yeah, you know, and the sun is, I mean, come on, the sun is so strong, and besides mm -hmm. the visible light, there's the invisible light rays from the sun, so you had after images happening, and, and it went away. I mean, if you were using the NASA grades glasses, you're okay, I promise. All right, so uh, when do you see a doctor? Yeah. The thing is, floaters are so common. If you're just seeing something squiggly floating around, okay, that's not accompanied with anything else, fine. You don't have to run to your ophthalmologist. 
Flashes of light are never something you want to ignore. Flashes of light is how our brain perceives tugging on that retina. Your retina, the important part of your eye that sees everything yeah. for you. So mm. anytime there's a tugging on the retina, you'll see a flash of light. You want to make sure you don't have a hole or a tear that that tugging caused. So if a hole mm. or a tear happened in the retina, you really want to go right away to your doctor. We can laser it in the office. That's a great picture because it shows you how fluid can get underneath a tear or a flap in the retina, uh -huh. and that can produce a retinal detachment, which is much more serious than just a tear. Will there be yeah. pain if that happens? Painless. You're kidding. 99.99%. You will not have pain. We're not talking about nerve issues there. We're talking about purely, you'll see, sometimes you'll see a curtain coming down. You never want to ignore that. Oh. Yeah. Almost like it's coming oh. up in the corner in my peripheral vision. What is that? What is that? Yeah, what is that, that could be that your retina is detaching. That oh could my be your retina's goodness. And really, that's so time sensitive because if you get into an ophthalmologist and we can either laser it or if it's worse and it needs surgery fine at least we're saving your vision but so like anything if something if you feel like there's one little thing wrong go to the doctor I don't mess around with my eyes. I don't mess around with anything. <laughs> you, know, you know, that's why I'm an ophthalmologist. I think your vision is so important. And I mean, I have people who come in and it's so sad they're coming in and it's like, oh, doc, Too it's late. been two weeks. I've seen a curtain up here, but I was just so <gasps> busy. And that retinal detachment, that's long gone. That can't be. Oh, my goodness. Oh, you how pump. quickly they go, well, they go blind? Would you We're be able talking to within the window? 24 hours 24 to 48 hours. hours you want to fix a Ooh, retinal detachment. What if you can't get to a doctor? You're working or something. <laughs> well, you know what? Your health comes first. <laughs> exactly. Your, your health yeah. comes first. You're going to have to start wearing an eye patch then. Not all floaters. We're talking about floaters associated with flashing lights, loss sure. of vision. You know we're yeah. all going to leave and we're all going to have to all I, 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 I think I've got something. I know, yeah. <laughs> well, what treatments are available then in, in the office for floaters? So for floaters in general, we do not treat because, like I said, they're just more annoying than anything else and they do dissipate over time. However, sometimes when there's a lot of them and it's really driving somebody nuts, there's a laser that we can do in the office to try to break them up. It doesn't always work, but it's very, very low risk. It's really disturbing that it's not painful and yet it yeah. could cause you to lose yeah. vision. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. 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 Thank you so much, wow. Doctor. You You're such great Is that what happened with Dr. Evil? Yes. That, yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. yes. He had yes. floaters. Like, very floaters. good. Yeah. <laughs> Retinal detachment and a floater. Out. There goes yeah. that improv. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> All right, you guys stick around up next. Lawrence Arian. I think you can see pretty well with those glasses. Now, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. Because I'm going to be showing all my students how to dress to impress.